Jotaro Kujo has fought the most minor antagonist of any single character in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, with fights ranging from extremely easy for him to depending on the right circumstances he'd definitely lose, and in some cases, eh, worse than that. The reasoning for this video is that while Jotaro is one of the strongest stand users in the franchise, and that's largely known in general because of how known he is outside of the franchise, his enemies themselves sometimes don't get the right respect even though that they did really well against him. So this video is essentially showcasing that. We're going to be going through the fights and ranking them from really easy slash the weakest to the strongest most difficult fight that he's ever had to deal with. Now first we're starting off strong because we have Jotaro Kujo versus Mohamed Avdol in his stand Magician's Red. This fight had been the first time that Jotaro had used his new stand for this short stand battle. Avdol's whole purpose is that he gets Jotaro out of the cell. Which he does, and that counts as the win there, but in this short amount of time, Jotaro shows the raw capabilities of his stand. But in terms of practice and skin in the game, Avdol was most likely going to win this fight through sheer battle prowess and his general intelligence compared to Jotaro, who is 17 and just got his stand. Now for as how this battle had gone, I think that he did a great job going against someone like Avdol who has a pretty good stand and he's had that for decades. So with that information, I'm going to be putting this fight in a clean low S slash high A tier. Now next up we have Noriaki Kakyoin and his stand Hierophant Green. This is a similar case as Avdol, but not only that, but Kakyoin here is fighting with the intent to kill because he has the Dio Flesh Bud implanted in his head. Kakyoin has had more time to learn about the potential of his stand, considering that he's had the stand since he was a child, but he had been straight up smacked up by Star Platinum without any sort of galaxy brain plays coming from Jotaro, and you can watch that fight multiple times over, but I think that since this is probably Kakyoin's first real fight, or just like, I guess one of the like really early on ones, like maybe this is like a second or third or something, but there's just no way that he was going to win this. I will say, Jotaro understood how strong an Emerald Splash could be and was, and if Kakyoin had the same battle prowess that he had at the end of the series, he probably could have beaten end of the series Jotaro with a 20 meter emerald splash of some sorts, possibly, but only if he has no time stop. So with all things considered, this is probably a C tier stand fight for him, and this isn't a genius Jotaro, again, let me state that. This is really early on, and his strength alone does numbers here. Now after that we have Greyfly and Tower of Grey. I know, like it's, it's the guy. It's it's don't don't ask me why they named him that, okay? It's not important. Now this fight became Kakyoin's fight, but only because Jotaro was not capable of doing anything here. Jotaro's speed actually wasn't enough here to do anything, and it's one of the few moments where another member of the team has to get involved to save the day. And I think that I have to put Tower of Grey here in S, purely because Jotaro in that instance couldn't beat him, but this isn't like a cohesive Jotaro, this is just a really early on one. I think that if Jotaro had gotten more time in the game, he definitely would have gotten around something like this. But at the same time, he doesn't really have stands that surpass him in speed, fight him later in the future like that, which is really interesting. So maybe this has an argument to be higher, but I think I'm going to just put it at S for the time being. Now we're on to Dark Blue Moon and the imposter Captain Tenil. You have to expect some sort of lower ranking here, considering that Jotaro beat him on both land and sea. It's like, yeah, okay. Uh, it probably would do well against other stand users, but you know, those ones would probably also have to suck also. Yeah, that's just the case. A matter of fact, I'll probably say that this is one of the easiest fights that Jotaro dealt with ever, right? But Starfinger did a I'd say a good amount of legwork because what the wh where was I uh, never mind. I understand that stands can manipulate their body. We're going to be talking about this later again, trust me. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably say uh, D tier, going off of context and potential circumstances, like say that there wasn't a star finger. Oh, hey, maybe this could be a bigger issue, but it wasn't and it happened. So this is what we're dealing with now. After that, we have Forever and Strength, the, the orangutan guy. Uh, I had a longer fight 
with that than the captain. But Joe Toro whooped this orangutan fairly easy. Like, he got pressed, but I think it's more so about seeing how he can navigate the situation. Especially considering that he didn't exactly navigate too well, considering he was underwater in just before. And that was... A, a, I don't know. Look, man. All right. This is where you see Joe Toro getting an idea of how to use his environment. All right. He was navigating the situation pretty well. It's not D tier. Even though it definitely feels like a D tier fight in total, uh, let's say in the case of against Jotaro, it's like middle area of this C tier. But depending on like the other fights being added on here, it may go lower. You know, it's, it's potential for it, and there definitely will be fights ahead of this for sure because it's not one of the best ones at all. Now, 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 this is going to be good. Rubber Soul. And Yellow Temperance, I and I promise y'all, y'all might not be with this because of, I'm going to be doing a tiny bit of metagaming, but I got to tell y'all the truth, right? Rubber Soul and Yellow Temperance, that fight, double S tier, I swear to you. There will be a lot of S tier stands, give me a bit, but level with me here. Is this not one of the toughest battles that Jotaro has been in? Be fully honest, because think about this, right? His use of the environment is just almost at his best here considering that he's just in the right area he's in the right area at the right time rubber soul showed up in a place that probably wasn't the best case scenario if he did showed up differently it would have been probably a lot better but 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 think about this yellow temperance put star platinum at like a full stop strength didn't matter speed didn't matter cold the heat nothing it's crazy and if Rubber Soul chose to attack later on in an area, you know, like without a huge body of water, which would be the, the, it's a big, big oversight for this stand user who's probably had this for a grip. But, you know, was, we have a body of water and he was able to get this done. But I'm telling you, this this stand, I've always respected this stand's game when we're talking about like the Jotaro fight and as if there's other fights, there's only one. But it was wild. It's easily one of the most difficult fights that Jotaro has ever been in. I promise you, double S tier. Goodness gracious, I almost forgot about Wheel of Fortune. But yeah, that was an attack on the entire group. And it was approached with the collaborative efforts of Jotaro and Kakyoin. And once it was a fight between Jotaro and ZZ, I'd say that... I'm not exactly able to tell you how outright easy it was in Jotaro's perspective, but we know that he was playing with him at the end of it, so at that point, I'm not really sure. I think a constantly adapting car would be an individual that's very tough for the most part, but the fact that he just knocked him right out of his stand is hilarious because what exactly was he supposed to do then? That's like a C-tier... But also a D tier ability. If you honestly talk to me nice, like if you tell me, yo, Caleb, uh, move this down to D tier because it does suck. I'm like, eh, okay, I'm not fighting you on it because this this fight is it's iffy for this type of ranking. The next battle is Enya and Justice, and I want to say I don't know how to gauge this because of how easily it wrapped up. But there has to be some sort of question towards it, if we're being honest. Because yes, again, I understand the body of a stand isn't set in like some sort of stone form like it's not set in stone uh and that's the reason why we had star finger we can manipulate in various ways and all that but how in the hell was anyone supposed to predict that in general like in the context of the story star platinum just having not only extreme lung capacity because th that's just never had to come up before like I, yeah i mean like well i guess in dark blue moon but we do it was it was good there but it's like that's not jotaro that's star platinum and d d would oxygen transfer from star platinum to jotaro probably not and it's the fact that he has this extreme lung capacity but also can just entire he can inhale an entire stand that was covering an entire like a town size like like i'm not tripping it right does he have to exhale is he toking the stand where in the hell did this ability come from i would have understood you know if he like spun his arms around like wamu to blow away the fog or something but he inhaled it and it was so easy but it's from this ability that we've just 
never seen him do. And I get like the idea. It's like, okay, this character thinks up on the fly. That's like something you're supposed to expect. I was like, no, of course. But because of this, I don't know if we put this in B because of how difficult that it was supposed to be or F because of how easy it ended up being. This was also an extremely strong stand with no supposed weakness and had gone against the whole horse pulling her if probably could have done more damage against everyone else because what were they going to do about it? It's fog. I don't know, man. I, this battle is like kind of annoying and frustrating, but I guess we're just going to move on because, you know, I got nothing for it. You know, B or F, we either are. Next up is Steely Dan and the Lovers. This battle had been more of a psychological one with alternative stakes. Instead of worrying about himself, uh, Jotaro's grandfather, Joseph, uh, his brain was on the line. The thing is, what Jotaro had to endure had been visibly disrespectful, but nowhere near as strenuous as a lot of the battles here that he's had to experience. Also, when Steely Dan tried that mess on Jotaro, it was a completely different story. It took more effort for Steely Dan pretending and begging and doing all that compared to Star Platinum squinting just a little bit and then just grabbing lovers out of there. Like it was nothing. Hilarious battle. D tier lovers, potentially, you could be F tier, high key. It, it was nothing. That was such an easy fight. Uh, you suck. But I'd say only in the context of this video, right? Because I do think this stand works against characters that aren't in the Stardust Crusaders. Well, actually, maybe, maybe just like Joseph and Kakyoin, it'll work on them. And if Polnareff isn't that precise either... You might be able to add them because Star Platinum can also like see really, really well, and and Silver Chariot never did that. That's not a thing about it. Yeah, this stand can actually work on a lot of people. It just so happens that Jotaro is the one. Now, 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 now. Next up, we're here live with Anubis combining the Shaka Khan fight and the possessed Polnara fight. The Shaka fight had been finished up with ease, cleaned up, like it was nothing. But the Polnara fight required a more perceptive and gentler approach because it's Polnareff's body. Not to say that he didn't put the hands on him. He did. I'm just saying that, obviously, Jotaro's gonna hold back to not, like, kill Polnareff. Now, Anubis with Polnareff had Jotaro on the ropes, right? But really only because Jotaro has to hold back a good bit. Is it possible that we could have seen Jotaro lose here? I don't think so, but it still can't be easy. If it had been easy, we would have seen Jotaro one-tap Polnareff to subdue him, but Polnareff genuinely had the speed to contest Jotaro in this way. If I had to compare the two, let's say that Jotaro is at 100. Polnareff here uh, has to be at like a... Don't, don't get mad when I say this. At like an 86 to 92 range here. Like that that has to be the case. We also have to consider that this is Anubis. A stand that's been around for hundreds of years. And Jotaro, who got his stand this year, had been the one to defeat him. That Like that's just funny. No matter how you spin it, it's that's, that's funny. Regardless of how we interpret the situation in favor of Jotaro or downplaying Anubis. The clear answer is that Jotaro won the fight with less of an offensive approach compared to his other battles i'd say let, let, yeah his, the rest of his battles I, not the, all of them but you know some of them at least so with that in mind s tier but not double s i feel like that's fair Ooh, right here daniel j darby now i don't want to count the next one as a fight but you know daniel j darby man it, it, man that is this guy is a funny guy Jotaro won off mentality and demeanor. Like, that's pretty funny. But if we're being real, did you know that Jotaro is a poker champion in Japan? It's in the JoJo art books. Also, did you know that I'm lying? This guy won off of bluffing. Like, come on, man. Great fight. That Putting that in quotes, like, as fine. It's not, they're not fighting, but you get the point. I'm saying that in quotes because it realistically also took no effort for him at all. He was in his head running around like it was nothing f tier weakest for him took nothing for him to do anything but again that doesn't talk about the quality of the fight we're talking about like easiest to most difficult remember that just just making sure 
Now we're moving on into High Priestess and Midler. The fight against High Priestess and Midler is somewhat of a troubling case due to the fact it's a clash of, I guess, the idea of underestimating and hubris to an extent. High Priestess had everyone pressed due to how adaptable her abilities were and how powerful her prowess was. She is an amazing stand user with such a good ability and her nail in the coffin wasn't even bad it's just that you know this is jotaro kujo of all people that's where you messed up they were definitely pursued and on the ropes for a bit and the stars crusaders were being pressed but there's this i guess sense of questioning if jotaro was truly in any danger because yeah he was but his strength had been enough to get past this battle and not really uh, a huge, huge play, to be fair to Jotaro. Um, he also did have the right situation that was advantageous to him in the end of it. And I guess maybe the whole thing is that picking and choosing your battles definitely matters in this franchise. And that he was getting pressed and it was an extremely difficult thing for him. But he just ended up finding the right way to get through this. And that's kind of how Jorno and Mista beat. Uh, white album despite it being such a powerful stand with a powerful stand user so knowing that this is where he could shine and he did because of that low s high a tier either or now next after that we have duel and gap not only is this one of the hardest fights that jotaro has ever experienced it's also the hardest fight that all of the group has been present for that's with uh, Iggy included. Let's, let's remember that. Uh, now, granted, it's the only fight that they've experienced all together, but you get the idea. It's, it's where it starts up here. And it truly highlights the strength of a true long distance stand because Geb had the Stardust Crusaders on the skids. It was bonkers i'm hoping that it's understood why i put these fights in these categories because there's always a key part of the fight that turns the ties to our protagonist's favor and double s tier is usually meant for damn they had to find an extremely vital key for this fight now without iggy the stardust crusaders do not win this fight i have no reason to believe that they do Others also have the theory that the final uh, standoff, Jotaro used a mini version of Time Stopper was some sort of thing because you see the animation warp. But that would also heavily contribute towards luck being on Jotaro's side, but I'm not going to factor that in here. All right. I should honestly just have a tier above double S tier for this fight because not only the fact that it took on Jotaro, it took on the entire Stardust Crusaders and realistically almost won. That's a strong stand. You have to be real. I get. I guess that it's set up for the environment, but he put himself in the best scenario, and and he completely capitalized on his crazy advantageous position. So I have to give Endul a lot of credit. This is double S, potentially X tier. I'm gonna just say that. So after that, we have Talon's T Darby, uh, my fellow people. I think you know where all this is going. So let's just skip to the position, and finally. The final battle of Stardust Crusaders, Jotaro versus Dio. Now, Jotaro had never been pushed like this before. The reasoning, well, I, I, he didn't fight Vanilla Ice, and Iggy had been around for the Enduel fight, but yeah, I, I do want to say this is probably his hardest fight in Stardust Crusaders. Let me not say the franchise. Let's say Stardust Crusaders. When, eh, even then, debatable. When considering the context and just for the fact that this was everything else and what it led to, Jotaro, with all that he's learned from his journey and by an actual extremely large contribution from pulling Earth in this fight too, coming through to save him, uh, which isn't a bad thing. Let's get that straight. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's like, yeah, okay, he has that friend. Yes, the friend's going to save him. Okay, good. Jotaro won. This is someone who's matched him in speed and strength, and alongside that, Dio himself is vastly stronger than Jotaro. It's not even comparable. Their stands can be comparable with Jotaro taking it over him, but body versus body, come on, man. 
It's Dio. He's like as strong as the world. Come on, we gotta be real about this. So, considering that Jotaro's resolve, determination, intelligence, and locked-in factor all combined for this one fight to take it over Dio, I'm perfectly fine with calling this Jotaro's hardest battle in Star of Crusaders. So, put this at the top of double S tier. You know what we're going to. We're moving on into Diamond is Unbreakable. Now, Jotaro's first fight in DIU is accidentally with Josuke. It's been a long time since Jotaro had to use his stand, and he's bringing it out against someone of a similar caliber. And that's unfortunate. And he did have to use his new time stop ability against Josuke due to the fact that Josuke was actually too fast then. Josuke broke through his defense and almost clipped him, but this is Jotaro not fighting seriously since he's on a mission and there's the fact that this is his uncle. It's also just, you know, a high schooler who hasn't been outside that way that Jotaro has been and experienced what Jotaro has been. But imagine an older fighter having to defend themselves against the prodigy. The vetted fighter is probably still stronger, more intelligent, and just all around better at fighting, but youth means burst speed quick thinking and you know just being physically better than what you are skillfully capable of i think we have reason to believe that this is probably some sort of a tier still not s tier though next up we should have yoshikage kira but my thing is that i want to register the fight with sheer heart attack and you know actual yoshikage kira with killer queen as two separate things because, you know, it's, it's largely different. Well, in the sheer heart attack fight, Jotaro is not only fighting for his life, but Koichi's. He's also prioritizing Koichi's life over his own for this. And he had also navigated the fight so well for himself. But when it came down to, you know, like Koichi messing up or something, Jotaro had to end up being the one to take the hit. Because if it was to hit Koichi, we have to be honest, like that's going to blow him up completely. Uh, but the fight was insane for him, man. He had been pushed to limits that he had not seen before, which does say a lot. And he's going against another thing where strength doesn't work, just like Yellow Temperance. Remember that? Except it's better than Yellow Temperance's case because there's not some sort of environmental thing that could help him. I'd honestly put the sheer heart attack fight in double S tier here also. And or, you know, if, if like we were doing the in dual fight X tier again like that, you know, if, if we were going to put X tier and have it exist, you know, that'd be really cool. But it's, you know, I know. as for the direct Jotaro versus Kira fight, well, uh, well, I have to be honest with you. Kira has never fought anything like that. He's not out here. He's just never been about anything. He's he's a coward. Uh, Yoshikaya Kira confirmed doesn't have the hands. He's only beat up Koichi because he's got, you know, like a size difference and that matters. That's why they have them in like boxing and UFC. But both Josuke and a weakened and damaged Jotaro, also a weakened and damaged Josuke, remember that, have laid him out 40 ways to Sunday. That's just the case. He didn't get a single hit on him. Can I put this in F tier? Because I will. Because I will. He got smacked. He wasn't doing good. He got defeated. Yoshikage Kira smoking on that Kira pack. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Also saying this right now, it's extremely hilarious that a sub stand performed better than the actual stand. Like, come on, man. What? Kira's not about that. Let's be real. If you gave Kakyoin Killer Queen, he'd get 20 times more stuff done. Positively speaking. But now finally, we're getting on into Stone Ocean to finish this job. The first fight would technically be his and Jolene's fight against John Gallier and Rico Pucci, but I don't think that there's a point to count this as a fight, considering it's more so just a really one-sided sneak attack, at least in the perspective of Pucci. Like, this is, this is what it was made to do. The better thing would to be just go directly over this, over into the final fight of Stone Ocean, because that will in turn, like, that will for real matter here. So... Enrico Pucci and Made in Heaven against the Stone Ocean Gang with Jotaro. This is, I, this has to be the one. This is the, easily the most difficult and toughest battle he's ever been in. When considering every merit. Because Pucci knew that Jotaro's time stop was a strong factor. Enough to turn the tides of his fight. So he had countermeasures for it. 
You can say that, yo, if, yo, have just Jotro v. Pucci, he'll run the hands and he'll beat him up. That, yeah, he knows. That's exactly the point. But by directly targeting Jolene, he forced Jotaro into the worst possible position. And while I could say, yeah, give Jotaro the chance to beat Pucci up individually, and he might, he will, that doesn't exactly matter here because Pucci is a one-man army against an entire team. And this power that he has that just scales above them all is a power that he had been fighting for this entire part. You can't get mad that it's a master plan coming into fruition and it was specifically made to annihilate the Joestar bloodline. It did its job. That's what he was trying to do. That's the whole point. Well, you know, unless, you know, we're talking about like Jotaro and Jarno and Josuke and eliminating the bloodline. They're not a part of this right now. They're not the focus. But other than that, two out of the living five, I guess that's a good ratio. Personally, if it was three out of five, it'd be pretty good, but... You know, you work with what you're given. Double S tier for Pucci. You stood above it all. And thank you all for watching. That that's that's a lot more emotion, but I, you know, I, I just get I get really invested in this type of stuff, you know? You feel me? Uh comment how'd you do it? If you do it differently, and or if you would want to see me do a different ranking of, you know, like maybe not Jotaro, maybe something else entirely, feel free to comment that too. I'm perfectly fine. I'm doing literally whatever. I'm just having fun on here. Uh, as long as you know you're not asking me to rank the parts. Because I feel like that is a video that's going to happen eventually, but I am avoiding it. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm ducking that video in specific. Like, that's just, it's rough. But I feel like it will happen one day, just not today. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, peace out and Godspeed.